Galadriel and Celeborn were amongst some of the most ancient of the elven race who still remained in Middle-earth at the time of Frodo's quest to destroy the One Ring. Galadriel would first leave Eleanor with her brothers and a host of the Noldor early in the First Age, venturing into Middle-earth and eventually coming to the Kingdom of Doriath, where she would meet Celeborn. The two would fall in love and marry, before becoming caught up not long after in the many wars against Morgoth. During the Second Age, the pair would come to dwell in Linden for a time under the rule of Gil-galad. In the years following, they would travel further east to Eregion, where the craftsman Celebrimbor would create the Rings of Power at the behest of Anatar, or Sauron, in his fair disguise. This is where Galadriel would be entrusted with Nenya, the White Ring of Adamant. Once Sauron's treachery was discovered after the creation of the One Ring, the Dark Lord would assault Eregion in an attempt to claim the other rings, and after his victory, Caliborn and Galadriel would flee to Rivendell to keep the three Elven Rings secret and safe. After the War of the Last Alliance and defeat of Sauron, the two would settle in Lothlorien, where they would rule as the Lord and Lady after the realm's former king Amdir had perished in the recent war. They would dwell there well into the end of the Third Age, and would aid the Fellowship of the Ring after their escape from Moria, bearing them gifts to aid them and protect them on their quest. After the destruction of the One Ring and Sauron's final defeat, they, like much of their kind, would travel west to the Undying Lands. Hi, welcome back to Mini Earth, and today I'll be painting up my Galadriel and Caliborn miniatures. These are some more classics, released early on in the days of the Fellowship of the Ring strategy battle game days. Coming out in February 2002, these fantastic sculpts were done by Brian Nelson and cast in white metal, packed together in a blister pack along with the Mirror of Galadriel. So for this set of models, on top of the usual cleaning up of mold lines and flashing, I needed to assemble the two halves of Galadriel's mirror. I first used super glue on the two halves, making sure to match up the shaped keys on each side. This still left a little bit of an unsightly gap, so I mixed up some milliput, rolled it into thin strips, and pressed it into the gap using a toothpick. I then did my best to sculpt in detail when needed to blend it all together. I left this to dry while I moved on to painting the other two models, which I primed all up in white. Starting off by painting Caliborn first, I used Viejo Wolf Grey to base coat the inner robes. I wanted the shades of the creases of the fabric to stand out a little more, so I mixed in some Wolf Grey with a little Neutral Grey, and applied it into the deeper shadowed areas. I then started blending the shades up to the lighter areas by adding more Wolf Grey. I'll come back for more highlights here later, but for now I wanted to keep blocking out the base colours for the clothes, so taking out Viejo Neutral Grey again, I started base coating the main outer robe, being very careful not to get this darker colour on the lighter sections I'd already painted. For the sash, I used Steel Grey from Viejo and painted the entirety of the sash area. With the clothing all blocked out with the base colours, I then shifted my attention back to the inner robe using my wolf grey base colour mixed with some intense white ink from scale 75 to build up the highlights. To highlight the sash, I mixed steel grey with wolf grey for the first highlight, and then straight wolf grey for the final one. To do Caliborn's outer robe, I mixed the base colour of neutral grey with a little stonewall grey, really only leaving the base colour visible in the deeper folds and creases. I then continued adding stonewall grey into the mix, layering up each progressive highlight. I then quickly took some white paint and tidied up the strands of hair that got some of the darker colours on them in preparation for the blonde hair. Then, remembering the little belt pieces over the top of the sash, I gave it a coat of neutral grey with a highlight of sky grey. 
Moving on to the skin, I started with a base coat of natural flesh, painting the face and hands while taking care not to get any on the robes. I then did my first highlight with a mix of natural flesh and fairy flesh, blending up into the features of the face. Then with highlight skin from Viejo, I did a final thin edge highlight on the most pronounced features like the top of the nose, brow and his little pointy ear tips. Then to really make the details pop, I took some Raclan flesh shade, only using it to darken the areas around the eyes and the slit of the mouth, to help further the depth of detail. Once dry, I then took a tiny amount of white paint and dotted the eyes. Instead of using my usual trick to do the eyes with a fine marker pen, I decided to use paint instead, so with the tiniest amount of black on the tip of my brush, I dotted in the pupils. The result, while requiring a steady hand, gives a much nicer finish than the glossy inky looks of the pen. I wanted to add in the darker eyebrows he has, so with a tiny bit of Rhinox hide on the tip of my brush, I slightly brushed on his eyebrows, which really just adds a nice extra layer if done well. Now it's time to move on to the hair. I started out with Viejo Kaki and used it as a base colour. Again, being very careful around the edges not to get any on the areas I'd already painted. Then from the khaki base, I started to mix in a little filthy brown to give it some yellow tones and some pale sand to lighten it all. I blended the two colours together and then applied it as a mid-tone to the hair. I then did a final highlight of pale sand on its own, just picking out the individual strands of hair. I almost forgot one little detail. I used some dark grey and painted in the end of his shoe sticking out beneath his robes, giving it a quick edge highlight of sky grey. Then for the last little bit, I used Viejo Air Chrome to carefully pick out the metallic detail of the belt buckle thing and his neck jewellery shiny thing, as well as the little hairband tying off the plait in his hair. Then I just used a tiny bit of watered down Nuln Oil to bring out the details on the buckle. So with Caliborn all done apart from his base, it was time to move on to Galadriel. For the Lady of Lorien, I started with doing the skin first, beginning with a base of fairy flesh to the face and hands. I then followed up with some Reichland flesh shade, just lining the edges of where the face meets the hairline and between the fingers, and as with Caliborn, around the eyes. I then tidied it all up with some fairy flesh again, before mixing it in with some highlight skin to start highlighting up the details. I really took my time with this part, both on Galadriel and Caliborn, as being hero characters and such iconic ones, I really wanted to bring out everything I'd learned to get them as good as I could. I then took out some Carmine Red from Viejo and mixed in a tiny amount to my flesh paint. This was then used to delicately paint on the lips. Next up was the eyes very, very carefully applying the white. Then, to do her enchanting blue eyes, I used Viejo Extra Opaque Heavy Blue and applied the pupils, doing my best to keep their direction focused ahead. I then tried to mimic the effect used on Kate Blanchett in the movie, where they had lights reflect in her eyes to represent stars. For this, I took the tiniest bit of white on the tip of my brush and dotted it into the center of the blue pupils. When I was happy with the face, I moved on to the hair. I mixed filthy brown and pale sand to get a nice golden blonde base tone and started applying it to the hair, doing my best to avoid any overspill onto the robe's white undercoat. I then mixed in some pale sand to the paint for the mid-tones, before a final highlight of pure pale sand, again just catching the most pronounced strands with my brush. Now, onto the white robes. I base coated them in wolf grey, wanting that pale blue tone to serve as the main shade here, since we mainly see her in the light that reflects moonlight or starlight. Once the robes were base coated, I then got out the white ink again, mixing it into the wolf grey and began to build up a gradual lighter tone. Eventually I moved up to using the white ink on its own, and as it's so thin, I used it to glaze on, layer by layer, building up a stronger whiter colour each time. 
After lots and lots and lots and lots of layers, I was happy enough with where it looked compared to what I had in my head. If I had a strong pigmented white paint, I might have tried seeing what a final edge highlight would look like, if it would be at all visible. But for now, I'm calling it done. I think it turned out alright, considering how hard white can be to look good. For her jewellery, I again used Viejo Air Chrome and carefully picked out her ring, Nanya, on her hand, making sure to get both the front and the back. I then carefully brushed on her little tiara crown headdress thing, taking care not to get any chrome on her face or hair. And that's Galadriel done for now. With the Milliput long dry at this point, I base coated the mirror of Galadriel in dark grey. I then took neutral grey and dry brushed it over the whole thing. I then did a second lighter dry brush using stonewall grey. For the leaves and foliage wrapping around the pedestal, I used Viejo Military Green as a base coat to all the greenery, making sure to pick out each individual leaf in addition to the main shrubby bits. Next, using Viejo Flat Green, I did a dry brush highlight across all the greenery, but using regular brush highlighting for the leaf scatter. I then mixed in Viejo Sun Yellow to the flat green to give a final highlight layer, repeating the previous step, but less intense. Then using a fine brush I mixed up the areas that needed attention like the big main ferny frondy thing and anywhere I couldn't dry brush without getting it onto the stone areas. For the mirror basin itself I used enchanted steel speed paint from Army Painter to give a dark metallic base colour. I then highlighted it with Viejo Chrome. Since the speed paint was still wet, I actually stipple blended in the chrome to the bottom of the basin, giving a nice little effect. I thought about doing some kind of water effect inside of it, but I didn't really have anything on hand at the time that I thought would turn out any good, so I just left it as is. I might do something at a later date if I get any good ideas. Now back onto the Lord and Lady, it was time to base them. I did my usual base of Rhinox Hide for the base rooms and tops. And to match the Lothlorien Elves I painted a while back, I decided to go with the same base material. So after applying some PVA glue, I dipped them in some Geek Gaming Scenics Mediterranean soil. I then dusted off the rims and took out a selection of grass tufts. Picking a few different types of varying sizes, I carefully scattered them around the bases. I then took this European leaves mixture and using a tiny dab of glue, just using the tip of a pin, glued them around the bases at random spots to try and represent the fallen melon leaves scattered around Lothlorien. Okay, so these are finally done and it's time to show them off. so many mass troop style models in large batch groups lately, it felt so nice to really just focus and take my time getting these painted up to the best of my ability. While I'm sure I could always take longer on these, I still have an obscene amount of models to paint. Not just from Middle Earth, but other, older worlds as well. And so much more. So I'll need to work through all of that eventually too. So that's Galadriel and Caliborn done. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate everyone who's come by the channel so far, and I'll see you all again soon.